Hi friends, it's Dana here. Today I have a story for you about the first U.S. woman astronaut named Sally Ride in a book called I Am Sally Ride by Brad Meltzler and illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. Let's go. I am Sally Ride. Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? That's the last line of my favorite poem by Mary Oliver. It's a question we all have to ask. Back when I was growing up, girls were expected to behave in a certain way. I saw things differently. I knew what I wanted and would climb out of my crib to get it. She's doing it again. <laughs> According to my parents, I was always running and moving, playing games with my sister, whom I called Bear. I can't catch her. She's too fast. <laughs> they called me a terror on a tricycle. I'd hop on anything that could move. Strollers, wagons, bicycles, roller skates, sleds, a pony. Our, on our trampoline, where I pretended to be Mighty Mouse. Here I come to save the day! <laughs> and at Disneyland, where I loved the fastest roller coasters. Faster! Make it go faster! Remember this part. It's going to be important. If you want to understand me, you also need to understand my favorite TV show. The very first cartoon show on television. Crusader Rabbit. I'd spend hours pretending I was trying to make the world a better place. I'd throw myself into danger's way, and then my sidekick, Rags the Tiger, would race in behind me. I'll stop this bad guy. You tell him, Crusader Rabbit. <laughs> Crusader Rabbit didn't have any special powers. He just ran fast and was full of so much hope he could make the impossible happen. Thankfully, my parents had a clear rule. They wanted their daughters to achieve not conform. There's no limit to what you can do or what you can be. Explore the things you love. That may sound obvious, but back then girls were treated different from boys. At school, they'd put girls in cooking classes, expecting us to do all the work in the kitchen. But in my house, my dad did the cleaning with us, always teaching us that girls and boys are equals. It ran in the family. My grandpa Andy bought me a baseball glove and taught me to play. He even sawed off a bat to make it smaller so I could hit. There you go. You've got great reflexes. Remember this part. It's going to be important later. <laughs> I was a, I was great at tennis too. One of my top one of the top ranked for my age in Southern California. I could also throw footballs and baseballs better than most boys. Back then, kids would tease me, saying I was acting like a boy. But I taught them quickly. I was a girl acting like a girl. I'm going to pick her for my team. I already did. <laughs> In school, I was sometimes a bit shy. Luckily, my teachers encouraged the things I loved, like science and math. I wanted to learn more. How are those brain teasers going? Good, you got more? I certainly do. My parents got me a 16-inch long Bushnell Sky Rover telescope. I'd drag it to the front lawn and look for my favorite constellation. There, I can see it. On February 20th, 1962, I was in sixth grade. I remember my science teacher wheeling in a TV so we could watch John Glenn take off into space. Three, two, one. After the launch, I was still clenching my fists. I was so sweaty. At the time, it didn't make me want to be an astronaut. Back then, there were no female astronauts. It's hard to have a dream when you're not allowed to participate. In high school, my teachers continued to encourage my love of science and math. Today, people want to know how I made it to outer space. It's simple. People always told me, yes, I could achieve my goals. My teachers made it clear the world needs great female scientists. One of the most important days of my life happened when I was in college. 
I saw a headline in the school newspaper, NASA to recruit women. For the first time ever, the U.S. was looking for new astronauts. Space exploration was changing, so instead of just tech pilots, NASA wanted scientists and engineers, mission specialists, for a brand new spaceship called the Space Shuttle. I applied right away. I was one of 21 female finalists. They brought me to NASA to put me through lots of tests. Wow, one of the best results we've seen. At one point, they zipped me into a small ball the size of a rescue sphere for when you land in the ocean without telling me how long I'd have to stay inside. <laughs> how long she been in there? About 15 minutes. Wow. How was it? Fine, though I'm glad I'm not taller. I did well at every test they gave me. Now all I had to do was wait. Ring, ring. This is NASA. You still interested in that job you applied for? Woohoo! <laughs> From there, the training got more intense. To prepare me for spaceflight, we'd zip over the ocean at 500 miles per hour, then climb straight up, five Gs pinning me against the seat. That's five times the force of gravity. I couldn't move my head or even lift a finger. You doing okay? I'm great! <laughs> to learn weightlessness, I even rode the Vomit Comet. Ready? Absolutely. It's a special plane that climbs high, then dips and dives so fast that it creates 20 seconds of weightlessness. Even the strongest astronauts throw up on it. <laughs> you really okay? This is fun! <laughs> It reminded me of my favorite roller coasters. Best of all, the men at NASA realized we female astronauts have real expertise. She knows more about these heat shields than I do. One of the key parts of our mission would be unloading and grabbing payloads and other items with our brand new Canadarm, a robot arm that was tough to maneuver. I spent years working with engineers as we designed and tested it. She's the best at this. It's because of her amazing reflexes. On June 18th, 1983, it was our turn. Five of us were on the STS-7 space shuttle mission. If all went well, I'd be the first U.S. woman to go into space. A quarter million people crowded around Kennedy Space Center to see the launch. T minus one minute. Millions more watched on TV. She's really going to do it. When it was announced I'd be traveling into outer space, reporters asked me if it felt like a big deal. T minus 10, 9, 8. But in my mind, the most wonderful day would be when it wasn't a big deal. When people realized that women in this country can do any job we want to. We have main engine start and ignition. And lift off! <laughs> For eight and a half minutes, you're pinned to your seat. But once the launch engine's cut off, your notebook floats in front of your face. Whoa. And then you float too. Whoa. <laughs> My favorite thing in space was being weightless. There's not even a close second. To move around, you push off walls. Did you know you're an inch taller in space since your spine isn't compressed? Our trays have slots to hold food containers. And you can attach the tray to a table or to your legs with Velcro, like this. If you want to make a peanut butter sandwich, you need someone to hold the bread so it doesn't float away. <laughs> Part of our mission was to use the giant robot arm to release a satellite into space and then grab it and pull it back to the shuttle. Ready? I'm ready. <laughs> this wasn't like the simulations we practiced on Earth. If I messed up and the satellite hit the shuttle, there could be horrible damage. Slowly, slowly, she did it! With calm and precision, I lowered it safely into the cargo bay. From there, we circled the Earth for six days, making 96 orbits and covering 2.5 million miles. The most important thing I saw in space was when I looked towards Earth's horizon. 
There was a thin, fuzzy blue line outlining the planet. At first, I didn't know what it was. Then I realized it was Earth's atmosphere, our planet's spacesuit. It was what protects us from the dangers of space. We have a responsibility to stop the global warming that affects our home planet. I believe we can do it if we work together. In my life, there weren't many scientists who looked like me. At NASA, there wasn't a single female astronaut, but there had to be a first. How did it happen? My family told me, yes, you can play sports. My teachers told me, yes, you can be a scientist. And most important, I told myself, yes, I can be America's first woman in space. Sometimes your dreams will be hard to achieve. It's easy to find people who will say no. You need to keep saying yes. All those things you love, yes, keep doing them. All those goals you have, yes, you can attain them. All those adventures out there, yes, go explore them. When you do, you'll blast your way to the stratosphere. After NASA announced Sally Ride's first flight, the enrollment of girls at space camp rocketed from just 8% to 30%. You should study science too. You're what a scientist looks like. Her second flight into space was the first to carry two women, including mission specialist Kathy Sullivan. You know what else Sally brought into space? A white scarf once worn by Amelia Earhart. Eventually, Sally Ride encouraged NASA to embrace a mission to planet Earth. Exploration is amazing, but she thought that the best way to save our planet was to better understand our own environment. Sally Ride said that kids like you, yes, you, are the perfect age to see people eventually set foot on Mars. Who knows? It might even be you. Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Start with what you love, push yourself, and when you see an opportunity, grab it. If space taught me anything, it's that there's no limit to what you can achieve. The world needs more female astronauts, more female physicists, more female scientists. You can be the first to do the thing you, we haven't even dreamed of yet. The impossible happens for one reason, because you believe it. I am Sally Ride. I explore the universe of possibilities. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed that story all about Sally Ride. And I think she has wonderful things to share, not just for the young women out there, but for all the people who need to follow what they love and push themselves and work hard because we need all sorts of scientists out there. And we need a lot of people who are passionate about what they do to go out and follow those passions. Thank you so much for reading with me, friends. Please join me again. Bye.